Thanks so much for tuning in to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week. Drop a comment on this video and give the video a share if you want to support my DIY channel. And if you're interested in advertising on my YouTube channel, feel free to email me at lastrockerstv at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Last Rockers TV, the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. I'm here with Faye and Eugene from the Rosillos. Hi, Erin. Hi, how are how you? you? Hi. <laughs> Thank you for giving me some of your time. It's actually funny. I've always heard of your band name, but what really prompted me of like, oh my God, I have to interview them this weekend. It was really funny. It was yeah. It was Tuesday night of getting into Blackpool, and I just had like a shuffle on on Spotify, and your song No came on, and I was like, who is this? Right. Okay. And I was like, oh my God, this is the Rosillos. I have to interview them. It was. I'm just in love. Love. Oh, so well, that's nice. Yeah. Good. So, um, you guys are classified as art punk. Can we talk about what that specifically means? I, I listened in your literary mm -hmm. performance, yeah, and I, I love it. Yeah, I think we probably are art punk because we're not a straight down the line punk band by any stretch of the imagination, and we bring our own artistic sensibilities to it and make it's me. It's it's um it's still very earthy, but it's a bit off kilter at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Um, have we got anything to say on that, Mr. Reynolds? Yeah. Yeah. Um, art punk is when you come at it from an artistic point of view, uh -huh. or you view it conceptually, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you don't just thrash out a few chords and think that by shouting you're writing a punk song. Yeah. You know, you've got yeah. you've got to have a concept. You've got to have threads through it, and sometimes your songs don't sound like your archetypical punk songs, and I'd be glad if we never do sound like that. But we got some thrash guitar, you know, we got great hooks, and we got an attitude throughout it, coupled with the fact that we don't sound or look like any other punk band. No, you definitely don't, and that's, you know, I mean, I feel like those are a lot of the bands that I'm always drawn to, because in the punk community myself, like, I, I really resonated with a lot of what you said about, like, this is just who I am, and my influences come from here and here and here. Yeah. And it's like, well, why would I want to be like everybody else? Isn't yeah. that the ethos of punk in general? Yeah, that's right. It's just, yeah, it's ironic that punk started out being different from the norm and then became the norm in a way. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I think all the punk bands that I like are all the ones that are a bit different. The outliers. Yeah. They have their own thing, you know? That's what punk was. It's once, once humans take something and then decide they're going to compartmentalize it, and force it into a toothpaste tube and make it into a commodity. In order for this to be recognizable, it has to be like this and it has to be like that. Then count me out. I'm not interested in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, punk, I mean, you know, I feel like what got a lot of people into punk, I mean, I can speak for myself of like, was it, it was rebelling against things. And, yes. then, and then you get into it and then they're like, well, you have to be this way to be punk. And it's like, but we're supposed to be rebelling against the societal yes. norms. And now that's yes. the societal norms of the punk community. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what it's are you rebelling bizarre, against, really. Johnny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a bit bizarre. Yeah. It's a bit yeah. bizarre. Yeah, so many people want to be in a club, though, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, you yeah, see yeah. It in all these different genres of people who like to identify, like people are into rockabilly and they have to have the right jeans and they have to have the right level of turn up and they have to have the right length of haircut. You know, it, I, I just I don't get it why people need to get themselves into this mode of being like everyone else in order to fit in. Yeah. And if punk fits in, then count me out. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I like your style, what you have going, because you have a little bit of the rockabilly with the hair and the shirt, but then we've got like the spacey, and then you've got like a Native American necklace. Like, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Seriously though. And then the same with you. It's like we've got all different monochromatic shades happening here. We've got the purple here and the here and like mm. it's like different shades of Actually, purple. I feel like I'm mostly black and white today. I know there's pink, <laughs> but black and white is my thing today. I've got on some fantastic black and white bell bottom trousers where you can't see them, but No, those yeah. are great. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. But the colours are in the music. Yes. Mm, the colours are in the music, yeah. <laughs> I am excited to see you guys play live tonight. Um, it'll, I think it'll be my first time seeing you live. Wow. So We've we played in Los Angeles, but um, not for a few years now. It became yeah. more difficult once Trump got in. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that we... It would be really nice to come back sometime, but yeah. we'll see. So what kind of things do you guys do to prepare for, for a show like tonight? I think it always takes us by surprise. Yeah. If, if it was just again prepared for this, I think it's as much it's mental preparation. It's mental preparation. You know, yeah. you, you like mm -hmm. you know, we rehearse, we rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. So we got the songs, and then when we think we got a set, then suddenly I know. For example, I said, "Why don't we do that song tonight?" And we hadn't worked it out, so we had to work it out. There's always an element of surprise in what you do. Yeah, um, I, I, I've seen some bands, you know, that, that are so regimented and organised. I just think. If that's what it's about, I don't want to be in a rock and roll band. I feel like that would be the antithesis yeah, yeah, of yeah. art punk, though, because yeah. you're not expressing yourself no. of how you feel in that moment. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, th I think we, we keep it quite sort of, uh, we, we let impulsivity or spontaneity come in. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, um, we did have an idea of having a set for this show about a week ago, but we had to change it at the last minute just because, you know, a notion, a notion came on to do it a different way, you know, but in terms of... It, preparing yeah i think it is a lot of it is psychological and just thinking what you're doing you know Deep all 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 the energy goes into that hour on stage and this everything else is just um it's a fog it's just a fog of getting there <laughs> definitely yeah. getting away from you. yeah talk about um the current lineup that's playing with you guys tonight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um who's who all is joining the two mm -hmm. of you tonight well well we still have the, the Rosillos were originally were a four four core members yes and then we took on other members as of necessary we still got the three of the four core members now so angel patterson still the drummer and we have a bass player who's now been with us we must be with us 15 years so yes He's us. Yeah, that's you know, Chris that's Agnew. Chris Agnew. Fantastic bass player, Chris. Yeah. Yes. And uh, a few years ago, we took on uh, Phil Thompson, who also plays in another band called Department S. Okay. And um, they were supporting us in some shows. And our and other guitarist like playing. Yeah, went somewhere else. And I said to Faye, maybe, maybe he's pretty good. Maybe he can do it. Yeah. So, he, and he could. Yeah, but, you know, he's, he's called he brings, Phil, Phil Marks. In, yeah. in the Rosillos. That's said, a hint. Yeah, he, he said, um, he said uh, oh, I could never be in a band where, um, where they changed your name and then he got his name changed. But, you know, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, you know? Well, what has it been that has um, sustained the two, the two of you's relationship for this long? I think we, um, we have a, we kind of bounce off each other creatively in an interesting way, wouldn't you say, Eugene? Yeah, yeah. yeah we kind of, we go through revolving doors with ideas. Yes. In and out, spin around. Um, you can't say any creative relationship is just sails along without finding different avenues with that person. Um, and 
you know, we have worked with other people before as well. But as being a nucleus, I don't know. I suppose we've been doing it for so long. Maybe we don't know any different. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We don't know any different. Yeah, but um, it could be so much better, folks. But we don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. Well, uh, yeah. We sort of vibe off, pe- off each other, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unusual that you know the Rosillos have two front singers. Most bands don't. Mm-hmm. Some do. Mm. but not many and it's it's always finding a balance between two different personalities two different singers and somehow blending that together in one band because quite often bands are quite monosyllabic that's the singer that's the guitar player whereas here it, it more, interweaves with interweaves, two with two yeah. people it's more like Fleetwood Mac you know what I mean <laughs> Yeah, right. Believe that and you'll believe anything. Well, we do. Uh, someone's got to get their head kicked in. Yeah, well, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Fleetwood Mac are probably about the diametric opposite of what we're about. But yeah. I know you like Fleetwood Mac. I love Fleetwood she Mac. Like. Yeah, I suppose this I like exemplifies... When first, I like to win the first game. Yeah, this is exemplifies. We have different influences, different interests, but somehow we kind of like improvise and vibe off each other in an interesting way, and it's still like that now. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, so I did hear in your um, interview on stage that you're actually working on new music. Can we talk more about about that and how far along you are, the recording process? Uh, We've done 10 songs for an album. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think we should maybe have 14 to choose Mm -hmm. from to decide what makes the best blend on the album. Um, It's um, it's quite inspiring. Um, And I think I think we're better at songwriting now than than we've ever been. but I guess you'll need to play some of our music on your show so people can hear yeah. it. Because you can't describe it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's it's uh, it's in it's in a production process. Uh, still, you know, it's it's quite far on creatively, but not necessarily in the recording department because we've mm-hmm. done a lot of pre-production. So um, basically, it's it's due to come out next September. Oh, that's so amazing. There might be one or two preview things before that. September that's, uh, 2024. Not, September, 2024. Not, not next month. No. 2024. Yeah, yeah. But there'll be some things off the album before the actual thing itself comes out. So you'll get to hear some things. Wonderful. So yes. from when we start touring again next year, we'll start to weave. The songs I, I like that yeah. word weave. I'm not even a weaver. We like to intersperse the old songs with some of the new yeah. songs. Yes. Um, and... Otherwise, we'd just be a dead band. Yeah. I mean, this, this, this tonight, we're actually playing quite a lot from the old album, the first album, and then quite a few songs from the second album as well, because I, I guess we just, Radio 6 played loads of our first album, and we thought, well, I probably want to hear some of that. And, they, and everybody loves their old stuff. But, I mean, what keeps us alive is doing new stuff too. So, for example, we're playing um, a festival in Portugal later this month, in a couple of weeks, and... Um, We'll have three three new songs in the set then. Yeah, hopefully, we'll, we'll start dating. Yeah, the songs. yeah, yeah. We'll start amazing. At the end we'll of the month. Yeah. yeah. So do you don't know, tonight. Do you think you might weave? No, any? no, no. <laughs> because what's that word no. weave? I've never heard of it before. We Basket thought we, weaving. We thought Sprinkle. about. Yeah, listen. We thought about Sprinkle. doing some songs tonight, but it's like um, they need to be worked in a bit for the playing a, a yeah. festival of this stature. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to embarrass yourselves. No. I'm like, oh, we're not ready for these. Yeah. We like to be properly rehearsed. I yes. mean, we've worked the songs out, but the thing is, then they take on another life when the band really starts playing them together. Mm-hmm. So the songs now are written, but then they need to take that kind of extra oomph from, from the players. And that's, yeah. that's our next yeah. step mm-hmm. in a few weeks' mm-hmm. time. your current um, set list tonight, which songs are you looking forward to playing the most? Oh, I don't look forward to playing any song. I just play it. Just play and um, they've got to be songs that, that we like playing. Like I said earlier, when, when we were doing that other interview, sometimes, you know, you think, how long have I been singing? Or how long have we been singing the same song? You know, actors and actresses, unless they're stuck in a theater player on Broadway for years, they move on to the next movie each time. 
Mm-hmm. So as long as the songs keep inspiring us, then then we'll keep we'll Quite keep playing them. them. Well, I, I'm I'm looking forward to doing uh, "Sorry About Tomorrow" actually, mm-hmm. I, and also. Um, do the mut- mutilation, which is a song that the Revillos used to do, because it's a complete sort of rad rock and roll song, and I love play- doing that. And I also like "Sorry About Tomorrow" because it's quite sort of, I don't know, the lyrics are good, and it's good to get your get your get your um, get your teeth into it. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm. Everyone likes to hear someone's going to get their head kicked in tonight. Yeah, so we'll and do I love that. to play that too. I love to play that too. Mm-hmm. It was interesting to hear you guys say, you know, the the actual maybe potential meanings of that song because, like, you know, being a, a punk band or just thinking punk music, you're like, yeah, someone's getting their head kicked in. Yeah, but we. <laughs> that's yeah, not yeah, what it's really it, about. No, it, it's, no. It, it's not. I mean, it's you know, it's up to interpretation. A lot of, uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of songs are just fantasy songs that set the imagination running. You imagine this type of thing. It's not meant to happen. No. You know, we're not interested in that. Happening well, I feel to like anyone. that's not your audience, but maybe the exploited's audience. No, <laughs> no, I don't so. think it would be their audience either. Do you know, I, th- I think they wouldn't do that. You know, the, the, that that song is a, a, a very old Fleetwood Mac cover. Yeah, and they were very, very earthy in the old days. But um, and they're a blues band. Yeah, but to me, there's something about that that really suits the Rosillos because when we do a song, when we do lyrics, we're always sort of like standing slightly behind as well and seeing it within a sort of broader cultural idea. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like, this is not necessarily inside the lyrics. You might be standing there Mm -hmm. slightly apart. Yeah, definitely. You know, a lot of people can sing songs like love song fantasy about their fantasy and being in love. Not Mm -hmm. that we do many love songs hardly at all. So, it's, if it's okay to see that through a fantasist's eyes, it's okay to see anything through a fantasist's eyes. I'm going to leave out a few specific pointers there. But, you know, if you've got a song if it like that, if it's about someone being, having their head kicked in, it just lets off steam with people. No one's going to do it. That's no. not what it's about. Yeah. And if, anyway. you, if that's the way you think, don't come to our show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, ironically, I think... Um, Punk, the punk movement broadly, you know, actually brings people together. It's actually a very lovely thing. I always think uh, people here are very friendly and very nice. There's not an ounce of pretension in anybody I've met, although I know I think you said you did meet one person like that. There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> I meet lots um, of them, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, there's always yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I meet all kinds of people, but most of them are nice, but there's, there's a handful. There's always, there's always <laughs> there's a handful. But the audience are very passionate and into uh, and it's a way of life for a lot of people. And I, there's something very nice about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I... Well, Gen- your punks over here are a lot nicer, to be honest. Do you think? Really? I know. Do, do you think punk in America is about uh, the United States being about being aggressive? and? No, yeah. I think people are just, just, like, they're always just on one of, like, calm down. Mm, just mm, dance. Mm. <laughs> 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 you know? Like, that's always the biggest yeah, thing when I come yeah. when I come to Europe, and, and especially England, uh, coming to punk shows here, is, like, everybody's just dancey and smiley and not like that in America at right, punk right. shows. Right. <laughs> like yeah. maybe a little bit, but like for the most part, no, it's a completely different different it's a bit scene. Darker. <laughs> People are just um they're salty. Salty. <laughs> salty and darker. Mmm. <laughs> like dark chocolate. Mm, dark chocolate. <laughs> well, I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time and I want to say thank you so much for giving me a portion of it tonight. It's a pleasure. It yeah, really pleasure. is a pleasure. It's funny, actually, sort of when it gets to be about this time, because it's not that far uh, before that. It's not that long before we go on. All the time seems to get really squashed in, and you seem to have less and less and less and less time. But yes. uh, yeah, it was nice talking to you, Erin. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys so yeah, much. I'm so excited us. to see you play tonight. Great. Hi, this is Faye Five, and this is Eugene Reynolds from The Rizillos. and you're watching Last Rockers TV. TV.